YouTubers, this is Dishti Ak with you once again. Uh, welcome to another episode of my video blog. And uh, in this episode, once again, we're going to look at some photography related tips and tricks. Um, this episode uh, primarily focuses on Adobe Photoshop. And what we're trying to do in the process of uh, uh, preparing some uh, headshots that I, uh, that I took the other day of my wife, uh, we are going to look at how you can synchronize or you can copy over the settings of one photo to another in Photoshop. It's very easy to do in Lightroom because all you need to do is you select all the photos and then you synchronize. It's very simple. And whatever you do in one photo gets applied to all the photos that you select. But how to do that in, in Photoshop? Of course, you can create, uh, you know, you can record actions and apply those actions and things like that. But what if you have just two or three photos or four or five photos something um, countable, measurable, finite, not too many, and you want to apply all the changes that you made in one photo to another, how would you do that? And the reason you would want to do it is that if you have a session, uh, it can be an event, it can be a photo session, anything. If you have a session, you want to make sure that the, the, the mood and the theme and the color and everything is the same and consistent across all the photos. And in order to do that, we need a way to synchronize. So we're going to look at how to do that in Photoshop. And uh, I think you're going to find it very useful. It's not something that I even knew uh, until very recently. Uh, and it has really helped me. It has really improved my workflow since knowing it. So let's head on to the table and um, see how to do this. Here are four photos of my wife that I took um, the other day. Uh, it was taken just, just outside our place and uh, we had a simple background um, and I just took a photo. She needed some headshots and I was actually out photographing the baby. I thought, okay, just, just let, let me take some photos. In any case, so here are her photos and so one, two, three, four, four photos that I've selected out of a few that I took. And if we were to process these in Lightroom, it would be actually somewhat easy. What we would do is we would select one photo, we would come to the develop module and once we are here what we would do is we would make any kind of uh, adjustments that we want to make let's say if you want to boost the exposure well not that much that takes out the whole person maybe that maybe bring down the highlights a little bit uh, maybe bring down the shadows just a little bit Move the whites and the blacks. Just, just arbitrary. I'm just, just doing it just to show you something. And then, well, less correction is applied. So let's say we want to do this. And once we're done, if we want to apply the same settings, whatever we did to one photo, um, let's say if we want, just for the sake of it, if we want to have fun, you can even come here and change the color of the shirt if you want. In any case, um, so. If you do this and you have a group of photos that you've taken in a batch, you want them to all be the same. You want the same look and feel for all photos in the same batch. So what you do is you press shift, you click on the last one, then you come to sync and you sync all and that's it, right? That's usually what you do. So you go from one photo to the next and you see that the exact same settings have been applied and we can verify that by looking at the change uh, you know the change color of the shirt that's why i did that so that we have uh, some sort of a marker saying okay it's been changed so you can synchronize like that and that's fantastic that's that's very usable and this kind of batch processing and the ease of it is very good for a lightroom and one of the reasons why i use this a lot um, well for a lot of the photos we eventually have to move to photoshop and once we do that it's difficult you miss uh, this synchronization you don't get this good batch processing so what can we do so there is a way and I personally actually didn't know that until very recently so I figured why don't I go ahead and share that with everyone so let me go ahead and reset each of these photos reset again and go to the first one and that's it so they've all been reset now, if we want to do this, say we went to Photoshop and we processed it and we did, we got a look and feel that we like for one photo and then we want to go ahead and apply that to all of the rest. Let's see, I don't know why my PC is being so sluggish suddenly. 
Oh, my Mac, my PC. All right, so here we are. All right, so the, all the photos have been um, reset. Uh, let, let the thumbnails update. I've reset this one too, I believe. Yep, I did. Or not. Let it load and reset. All right, so they've all been reset. Now, if we want to process all of these in Photoshop, what do we do? So just like before, we select all of them right click edit in Photoshop and I'll allow Photoshop to open these these are all um, in raw format so it's gonna go through camera raw and do its basic uh, you know processing thingies that it wants to so I'll, I'll pause the video a little bit and come back okay so here we are we have all the photos here now to work on this let's let's say we work on this uh, one photo so we make a we unlock the background layer uh, we create a copy of it by pressing command J and then let's take a look let's see what do we want to fix let's say we want to fix uh, the stray hair that we see here let's come to uh, let's let's look at what the healing brush does if it doesn't work then we can al always go to the cloning stamp mm, nah, I don't like how it's working so let's do the proper way let's pick the clone stamp tool and then we define an area and based on that we paint over this is this is just to demo oops not that doesn't look good so let's and as, as I was saying this is just to demo how to work on these things so let's say we make some changes here alright so we when you're here you can make a little bit of oops that's a bad bit of work but let's let's just keep it you know what to do you can you can uh, take the clone stamp tool and you can take away um, any kind of stray hair and whatnot that you want to take care of or any other kind of editing um, now let's say we add a layer let's say we add a well, color balance layer just to, let's try it so let's look at the photo we um, looking at the the colors here maybe we want a little bit of green we want a little bit of red I'm looking at the face mostly trying to balance the color and, and then to get something that I like well not the green or the magenta so much well, maybe there we, we, we are trying to, to demo something so let's do that um, let's add another one which one let's say a channel mixer let's come here and let's let's play around with this a little bit more this time just looking at the overall again um, the, the kind of look and feel that we want um, um, that's what I'm looking at right now uh, I'm looking at somewhat the background but the, the foreground as well trying to make some sense of it playing around going back and forth in different colors as you would do as part of any 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 kind of portrait editing or something like that say let's say you come up with this and you like this and of course the background we want this to be a clean one so let's create an exposure um, adjustment layer and just boost it uh, let's keep going 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 until we don't see anything of the background which is about now but it has blown out my foreground and for that what we can do to fix it is we can come to image apply all um, not merged or you can go for merged but let's let's just pick one particular layer let's pick that one and here we have a mask so we can click on uh, we can press alt and click so we can see the mask itself so it 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 creates a mask according to the gray levels that it has here we don't want that we want it to be completely black or white so so that we can take the background out so what we do is we pr I pressed command L to bring up levels for that mask and then I move it <coughs> and I, I'm keeping an eye out here or it'll, it'll show here as well so let's see let's just, just keep keep playing with it until it makes well until we get a clear view let's say something like this and all right 
that's somewhat here. Let's press OK and once we're here we can take a brush and whatever is left inside of the face we can paint it over. All right? So we do that and that's it and press X to reverse and get a white and all these areas that we see gray or something we paint over that. So this way we have a clean enough mask without having to go through the whole thing on our own. So there's that, it's done, so let's just click outside and that's it. So we're pretty much done, that's, that's all we need to do. So we can take all of these, not this one, because this is just a copy. Uh, we can name it here if we want, but that's not a problem. Let's select all of these, we can either click and drag it over to the folder icon here or we can just select those and click the folder icon and that's it. And let's name this adjustments. And that's it. So this is done for one photo. Let's see what we can do with the other ones. To work on multiple ones and to kind of copy these to other ones, what we do is we come to Window and in, not in, where was it? Uh, oh, my bad. Yeah, Window, then Arrange, and here you see Float All in Windows. There you go. That's the one I was looking for. Uh, what this does is it creates all of these floating uh, images instead of that one. So what you can do is you can select this one, the one that we worked on, come to the adjustments, just drag the whole thing, that folder over to the other one, and you'll immediately see that it now has the adjustments group, all of that. Unfortunately, the problem we have is that we have a mask because we had that and it doesn't work quite well, so you can either delete that or you can come to edit fill fill with foreground which is pure white so there you go and then once again just like before you come to apply image and let's say you apply the background image for this one and then just like before so basically if you're using a mask you need to reapply that mask that's the only change you need to make and that's it so and just like before we'll come in and we'll take a brush uh, alt click to view and oops my bad we take black and paint over the person and of course i should have uh, fixed i could have fixed the hair or i should have gone back and uh, adjusted the layers in such a way that this is taken out so i can paint over this just like before so i'm not not too uh, worried about that right now but the idea of it um, I hope you get by now that you can always take this and apply a mask just like before and whatever you need to do will be applied here once it's done you can take it and once you take it over the other one it'll create it'll just stack into tabs like before and once again you take the settings and you click and bring it bring it over to the other one so let's, let me just do that uh, so I take those and I apply here and once again the problem with the mask so we can take out the mask actually uh, something that would help the workflow as I am figuring out right now is if you just took out the mask and applied it again and that's the idea just do it and you can just stack it and again bring it drop it on the other one once again clear out the mask and things like that so that's it and if you if you're wondering how to bring it back to how it looked before just click on here bring it here and there you go that's the view if you had this default view before um, that's the one you're gonna have then so that's it if you if you're working on any kind of um, photo or any 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 portrait session or something where you need to come into Photoshop and fix little things you know like like fixing the stray hair and anything else that you want to do anything advanced um, anything that Lightroom cannot do to fix it you come in and you drag and drop the adjustment from one photo to another that's it um, I hope you found this useful uh, it has been very useful for me and uh, that's it for this episode I welcome you to another episode future in future and let me know your feedback. Thank you so much.